I made a mistake. I bought the technically best TV for our living room. As far as I can tell, this is where the problem started. Gritzy YouTubers, here is the guy with a Swiss accent, with a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. According to reviews, the best 49-inch TV came from Sony. The old was a Samsung TV connected to a UPC set-top box, also built by Samsung, and to my trusted old Yamaha receiver amplifier, which drives these cute boxes. The Yamaha and the big boxes are all from a time when things were analog and when music stars lasted longer than two months. It took me a long time to get these boxes to our living room, as you might guess. All was controlled by this remote. In addition to the set top box commands, it also had volume buttons and a TV on off. What I forgot during my evaluation was that this was only possible because the TV was also from Samsung. When the new TV was delivered, I replaced the old Samsung and when my wife came home, presented everything to her. She again told me that this investment was not really necessary, but accepted it. After all these years, she knows the man at her side. Now we nearly could stop the video with a sentence and they lived on happily till the end of their lives. Unfortunately, that's not the case. During the evening, she called me and complained that she was no more able to change the volume with the remote. A significant thing for her. As usual, I first thought it is a user error. Maybe my instructions before had been a little bit too fast. Then I tried, and it also did not work for me. This is when I started to understand that I had a problem. Here is the issue. In the old setup, it was not necessary to control the volume of the amplifier because this was done through the TV. The new design was very different. The Sony TV does not care about Samsung's IR signals and even with its proper remote did not change the volume because the Yamaha amplifier now was connected via an optical link at a constant signal level. What a mess! My wife insisted on one remote and it had to be the one from the set top box. As before, a little depressed I went to my lab. This was not the success I dreamed of. But being a maker, I did not want to give up. So what's the problem I have to solve? I have to make the Samsung remote speak Sony and Yamaha. I needed a Babble Fish for IR devices. The Babble Fish was a universal translator used in the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, written by Douglas Adams. My Babble Fish should be simple. It has to consist of a receiver for the Samsung remote and a transmitter for the other two devices. Oh, by the way, I forgot to tell you something. Because it was not needed in the old setup, the Yamaha remote had disappeared a long time ago. So I had to find out the IR code without having the original remote. A real headache. Receiving IR signals is quite easy. You find the details in video number 171. Most devices use a 38 kHz carrier and modulate it with a digital signal. Using a modulation is necessary to distinguish between our remote signal and daylight. Fortunately, we can buy ready-made parts which receive the IR signal, do some conditioning and provide a digital signal as an output ready for decoding by an Arduino. I use the TSOP4438 for my purpose. I also could have used a TSOP4838 or a VS1838B. I do not know the differences. The heart of my IR bubble fish should consist of an Arduino Nano because it is smaller than a Uno and can be programmed directly via USB. So I connect the TSOP4438 to the Nano and upload the irrecdumpv2.ino example file. And really, the codes are pouring out the serial monitor. I start to cool down a little. I need the following signals. TV on, volume up and down, and mute. All four codes are Samsung codes. 
a piece of cake with this sketch. Next we have to find the codes for the TV. I use the Sony remote and press on. We see that the command is A90 and it should switch the Sony TV on. How easy would it be to use the Yamaha remote to find the three missing codes? But as said before, it is gone. And I did not find the replacement. So no shortcut possible. The search on the internet started and finally after many hours I found a way on how to get the ancient codes. On remotecentral.com I found the codes of a similar receiver amplifier in so-called Pronto format. Pronto was one of the first universal remote controllers made by Philips. You still find many IR codes in this format. I did not find a ready-made converter to transpose this code in hex code used by the Arduino IR library. But I found a Arduino sketch which can send Pronto code. So I used this sketch to transmit the code found on Remote Central using a second Arduino Uno. IR Receive Dump V2 showed the right 32-bit codes. So the hardest problem was solved. I was able to write a small bubblefish sketch. It listens to the known Samsung codes. As soon as it discovers volume up, for example, it sends the corresponding code to the Yamaha and so increases the volume. The same with volume down and mute. The TV on off is translated into a signal for the Sony TV. The hardware looks like that. The TSO P4438 receiver delivers the signal to the Arduino Nano. Because I wanted enough IR power, I added a beefy N channel FET and a 3 watt IR diode with a lens. To get audible feedback, I added a buzzer. The last question was, where to place the bubble fish? Looking at the situation on the receiver and the TV, the only valid position with line of sight to the TV and the amplifier was somewhere in front of the TV and the Yamaha. Below the table, for example. Fortunately, enough of the Samsung remote signals were reflected back to my bubble fish. Now my wife has to be happy again. A first test showed that the TV did not react to my device. I checked again and did not find the issue. I had to go one level deeper to the bare metal. To do that, I connected one of these GPO logic analyzers to a VS1838B receiver and fired up Sigrock, an open source logic analyzer software. Yes, I know, I could use another software, but it would be illegal. Sigrock clearly shows the issue. Even if I only press the button of the Sony remote for the shortest time, it already sends four times the same code. So I changed my sketch and now my device also repeats the signal a few times. And the TV switches without issues. Now it was time for the so-called user acceptance test. I installed everything and proudly presented the features and functions. She was not really impressed. If something works as it worked before, it is nothing thrilling for her. It was more a correction of my mistake. Unnecessary to explain her the different complicated moves which were necessary to create my bubble fish. I left her watching TV and went back to my lab. The video for Sunday is still not produced by artificial intelligence. After only five minutes, yelling from the living room. She wanted to decrease the volume when loud music started and it took her forever. Also this was a step backward from her old system. The resolution of this issue was simple. Again, repetition of codes. Instead of sending only one volume up or down, I send now five in a row. Like that, the Yamaha reacts faster and she is okay with it. But she is not at all okay with the wiring of our living room. A cable in the middle of the room to the device under the table was just unacceptable. Now I had a real problem. An IR remote is not exactly a low power device and cannot easily be driven by a battery if it has to be always on. The place below the table was strategically chosen because the IR race had a free line of sight to the TV and the amplifier. Desperate, I tried a last resort. 
I printed a new case and placed the IR transmitter at the top. Babelfish version 2.0 was born. I put it close to the amplifier and really, because the sheer power of my design, reflections were also seen by the Yamaha. And later tests showed that the TV one story higher also got its fair share of reflections. Now Bubblefish version 2 quietly sits here in the compartment and can be hidden if her girlfriends come for a visit. Together with all the other uncool technical stuff. Who would have thought that? A happy end here in Switzerland? Happy wife, happy man again. And I learned a few things about IR remotes which can also be used for other projects. We can receive and send codes with the same Arduino sketch. The IR remote library is quite powerful in detecting all sorts of codes and is an enormous help if you still have the remote control. Please also keep your old remotes. It may save your butt. RemoteCentral.com is an excellent source for lost IR codes. Together with a Pronto code transmitter sketch on another Arduino, you can translate this code into the format needed by the IR remote library. If you want to increase transmission power, you can do that by adding an N-channel MOSFET and a powerful IR diode. A capacitor helps here to stabilize the power rail. IR reflections seem to be quite strong. With the help of a little power, you can also bend line of sight to your advantage. Imagine the non-maker alternatives to my Bubblefish. A new Samsung TV and a new sound system would have been the smallest damage. The bigger one would have been a divorce. And the maker solution? Below $10 and a few happy hours in the basement. What a wonderful life. By the way, later on I discovered that the TV switches off after a particular time because it is only used as a display and does not get any IR signals during a typical session. So I enhanced the code. Now the TV also gets a message from time to time. I choose the volume down command which does not affect this setup other than telling the TV it is used. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. If true, please consider supporting the channel to secure its future existence. You find the links in the description. Thank you. Bye.